welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects, as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, I'll be doing only one of my regular videos this week because of Veterans Day, Mythic Plays will be on Friday. My wife Jessie and I will be playing Monster Apocalypse against one another. And I won't be doing a live Q&A this week at all. So we don't have any news on Ridebusters Project Vril, Enchanters, Darkest Dungeon the board game, or Six Siege the board game, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc this week, we wanted to update you on how Fulfillment is running. Many backers in the EU have begun reporting that they've received address verification emails, and this is great news. Uh, there has been some confusion, though, as not everything they ordered was included in those emails. Realize that since Meeple Logistics is processing product as it's coming in, some product that hasn't arrived in containers will be coming later. And on that note, two of the four remaining containers for Meeple Logistics will be delivered to the hub on November 11th. In North America, which includes our Canadian friends in the North, Address verification emails should be going out around the middle of this week. Spiral Galaxy in the UK reports that their container has arrived in port and is now awaiting customs. Another set of questions arose about where the RPG materials are and if they were ready for release. As you know, this is a publication coming from Black Book Editions, but due to the limitations set by the litigation with Pascal Bernard, we need to have his approval to begin working on the RPG. We're in the process of waiting for a list of points that need to be addressed, and this is a process that can take some time to be completed. As usual, we'll continue updating you as new milestones are reached and getting your product to you, and we certainly want to thank all of you for your support and patience. For Solomon Kane today, just a brief note concerning shipping. We previously decided to have Solomon Kane Wave 2 wait for Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 to be ready for shipment so that we could combine shipments of the two products into one. Due to power outages, however, our factory will not be able to complete packaging up Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 product on the previously mentioned schedule to be shipped by mid to late November. So, shipment of Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 has been pushed back to December. But considering that, we have also chosen to not make Solomon Kane Wave 2 wait any longer, and we will continue forward with it shipping out in the same time frame as before, mid to late November. So, to clarify, Solomon Kane Wave 2 will no longer be waiting on Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 for shipment, but will instead head out as soon as possible. For Steam Watchers today, just a quick note to say that FuelX and D6 have reported that all shipments have headed out the door and are on the way to the backers. Backers should be receiving their product in the next few days. Now, we're still here though, in the meantime. So, if there's any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us at support at mythicgames.net and our customer support team will be glad to assist and whatever you need. And a big thank you goes out to everyone for your support and patience as well. For Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 today, we do have some bad news in that due to power outages, our factory will not be able to complete packaging up Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 product on the previously mentioned schedule to be shipped by mid to late November. Shipments of Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 then has been pushed back to December and we do apologize for this delay, even though it was something completely out of our control or that of the factory, too. On another note, some questions have arisen centered around the adjustment of some of the champions in the game. Adjusting champions in a competitive game is not an easy task, especially when you're also working on the future of the game at the same time. So we want to make sure that everything is aligned and works together. To do that, we need to do a lot of playtests. We have indeed reworked some of Season 1 champions from both Round 1 and Round 2. We're currently in the phase of playtesting those changes with a core group of testers. These changes will be announced along with the official set of tournament rules in early 2022. 
we will take the necessary time to make sure that everything works as we intend it to. Please note that these changes tackle reported issues for competitive and tournament play only, and that you can absolutely continue to play with your champions as normal for casual play. Thanks so much for your support and patience. For Hell the Last Saga today, we told you in the last update about the playmat size change. Well, here it is in all its glory, front and back. This monster is 120 by 90 centimeters. To keep a multilingual look, we decided to replace the prayer launch effects by a visual summary, which will be referenced on the player aids. Some of you asked us whether this playmat will be folded or rolled for shipment, and simply put, it will be rolled in its own package, as we have for our other campaigns that had larger playmats in them, like Reichbusters Project Vril, Solomon Kane, and Steam Watchers. And here is the last progress chart. Song 6 was a real tour de force to finish. Our writers were particularly inspired. These four scenarios together total more than 300 paragraphs, but no less was needed for this pivotal song of the story, after which nothing will ever be the same again for our heroes. By comparison, song one has about 60 paragraphs, and the other songs have anywhere between 100 and 150 paragraphs in them. We've hired additional translators and proofreaders for English and French for the time being. For the other languages, it's coming together, but we'll also have to hire extra graphic designers who are native speakers of the target languages. On the production side, our factory has started to study the packaging according to the data and quantities that we've given them, and it seems that the final size and weight of the game will be a challenge to fit in only two boxes. The projected size of the Saga booklets must have something to do with it. They've provided us with several new solutions, which we will show you in a future update. We know you're looking forward to seeing a live playthrough in English with the physical prototype and the final updated rules. The rules are now being reviewed, and we have also need to print all the miniatures for it. So we're working hard to get it all done by the end of the month. Thank you for your support and patience, everyone. We are now a week into the Monster Apocalypse board game campaign, and my goodness, you all have been knocking it out of the park so far. At the time of writing this, the pledge amount is just over $562,000, and you've just recently unlocked the 18th stretch goal, which reinforces the Masters of the Eighth Dimension faction in the Rising Realities expansion box, which also includes the Shadow Sun Syndicate. It adds four new Uber Core units to the core box. This means that so far, seven new monsters have been added to the Monster Apocalypse board game core box, bringing the new grand total to 15 monsters, with seven monsters for the Destroyer's agenda and eight monsters for the Protector's agenda. And with the four new units unlocked, the number of units in the core box is increased from 66 to 70. So the contents of the core box is now 15 monsters and 70 units. Now keep in mind that we started with 8 monsters and 40 units. The contents of the Simeon Core add-on is now 5 monsters and 17 units. The content of the Rising Realities add-on is now 5 monsters and 13 units. And another add-on, the Frost Tide expansion, was announced yesterday, which includes the Tritons, and Zircolo block factions. This expansion currently contains four new monsters, ten new units, and two new buildings. You guys and gals are most certainly rocking it, and with ten days to go, we have a lot more in store as far as stretch goals and add-ons are concerned. So spread the word and let people know how excited you are about the Monster Apocalypse board game. And we, of course, can't say thank you enough for the support of the game that you've poured out on us. And it pushes us to see what else we can do to blow your minds. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or you just want to see what he might be able to show because he usually does show some pretty neat stuff. 
As mentioned earlier, my wife and I will be doing a live playthrough of Monster Apocalypse on Friday this week at 10 a.m. Pacific Time in our Mythic Plays series. But I won't be hosting a live Q&A on Thursday morning because of Veterans Day. But that's it for today. Stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Take care.